The Golden Knights hope to break out of their mini slump tonight in Montreal in a rematch against the Canadiens after VGK recorded a win in the first meeting back on October the 30th. We have much more ahead right here on today's edition of Locked On Golden Knights. Your Locked On Golden Knights, your daily podcast on the Vegas Golden Knights, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making us your first listen. Tony Cardasco, Chris Golick from Las Vegas. And please make sure to check out our Locked On Golden Knights YouTube channel and subscribe there. We are brought to you today by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use the promo code Locked On NHL for $20 off of your first purchase. So, Chris, last night I did. I took that uh, adventure. And I went to the opening ceremonies uh, there for Formula One. A lot of fun. Great to run into some good folks out there. A lot of folks that uh, follow me on uh, Twitter and social media and such. And yeah, exactly. But a a lot of folks out there. It was a good time. And uh, yeah, we were up uh, watching the opening ceremonies up there. Uh, We were up in the skybox. Client gave me the tickets. And as much as you say, no, I'm not going to go, right? I'm avoiding this thing. I wound up going. And I parked just for the locals out there over at the Sahara. I took the monorail. Uh, the monorail ride back was crazy because uh, I got back on the monorail around 1 o'clock in the morning, one fifteen, And just, you know, some drunken shenanigans. But a lot of employees had to park on the northern side of the strip there and outside on the outskirts. and just a lot of whining and uh, it was a great time. But again, at what expense? You know, you just kind of wonder a lot of the uh, the folks here, the locals and just not happy about the inconvenience, more or less. But of course, good time. of course. And you're going to try to go out there and try to sneak a gander. I might just do it. Unofficially. For the they're not watching. They're not watching the show. I might just gonna, I might. Oh, I don't care if they're watching this show. I, I hope I can steal away into the venue without buying a ticket. Yeah, I mean, not into the venue, but getting a glimpse somewhere, getting a glimpse somewhere. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah. Uh, The grand opening was just at the uh, the corner there of Harmon and Koval here in Las Vegas. Um, And that's where they have the grandstands set up. And then they also have the paddock area. And that's where the cars are all located. And they had all these performances by a variety of different uh, mainstream artists performing on top of blocks. On top of these uh, these big blocks, wasn't and someone was dressed of... as a construction cone, or was that a joke? No, that was Jay Balvin, and he, he was tr- yes. Well, enough, the yeah. folks out there know who that is. But w- what had happened with Jay Balvin was he wore this bright orange outfit, and someone said, "Oh, there's Tony Cardasco. He's out there dressed as a traffic cone." That was pretty funny. So are you that okay? Was, you I fell mean, off that truck yesterday, jumping off the Carlson bandwagon. Are, are you okay from that? Who did? I did. did. Yeah, I on, on the on the LA freeway, you were that that you were on that pickup truck. It was the William Carlson bandwagon. You jumped off that truck going like sixty miles an hour. Are you okay? Oh yeah, you like that video. And a shout out here. Oh, we're gonna do a show today. Yeah, we will do a show eventually. Yeah, well, uh, DJ Joe Green. I did. Uh, I talked to him on the phone, and I said, "Hey, bro, if you play, if you play Dancing Queen." I'm going to come after you. Uh, you're, I'm going to throw hands. I'm going to throw hands. So he was out there. He DJed. It was a great night. He'd crush you, dude. He would absolutely crush you. <laughs> Joe Green, yes. <laughs> yes. On the decks, he would absolutely crush me. First meeting between VGK and Montreal, won by the Golden Knights here. Shea Theodore had the winning goal. He potted the winning goal in that one. At the time, VGK was a team that improved to 9 0 oh, 1. And Montreal was hot, and now they've kind of evened out at seven, seven, and one. And to me, this is a pretty big game for VGK, momentum-wise, after they've lost three or four. And I think they need to try to get back on track in tonight's game. No doubt about that. Montreal's a good team. Let's start there. They definitely got a lot of talent. They're dangerous. They have a couple lethal players that can find ways to score quickly on you. Of course, in Suzuki 
and obviously Cole Caulfield. Um, the Golden Knights let the Canadians hang out last time the two teams played, and uh, lo and behold, it winds up going, I believe, all the way to the shootout, if I recall, that night. And uh, mm. the Golden Knights, you know, like you said, improved to 9-0-1 after that game. Last couple of games for the Canadians, lost to the Flames. Looks like it's two to one, weird low scoring game. They were Vancouver. frustrated. There was a bad penalty call in that game. And at the end of the game, Canadians are still like squawking about oh, that. Oh, I was going up and back with someone on Twitter about that. And they're like, oh, the refs need to be held accountable. The ref and... was at a position that made the call on a tripping penalty that it's cost a, so them the it's, game. It's a bad penalty. It's mm -hmm. a bad penalty in a 60-minute game. Okay, fine, whatever. Like The issue isn't the bad call. Like, people can chirp the refs. I don't care about that. The problem was like this person, oh, the ref should have to answer to the media. They should have to do media interviews afterwards and you know hear from people and, and just give the refs a chance to be dragged by everybody for missing a call. And that's that's what I was arguing with. Refs miss calls. Like, I don't care about that. But, you know, that was, uh, that's, I mean, listen, I, I'm biased towards refs. I'm. It's been, I'm not a practicing hockey referee anymore, we'll say, but in the last year I have been refing a lot of ice hockey and people start chirping the refs. I get a little defensive. Of course. Uh, this is the game when they first met with Lay Gaff and Aiden Hill <laughs> on the Sean Monahan goal. Um, and so tonight will be Hill's turn, I would have to imagine. Oh, yeah. 100%. Okay. Well, and it's so not 100%. Be... It's not Hill until obviously we find out in about three hours when they do their morning skate. Maybe. Maybe even less. They'll probably be skating around eight or nine a.m. local time. I would have to assume, and not just Aiden Hill or who the goalie is going to be. We got to assume it's going to be Aiden, but I would have to assume we get Nick Wah back in the lineup this evening for the Golden Knights. Mm -hmm. um, he's graduated to a non-contact jersey, so he's got at least a skate in under him right now um, with wearing a regular sweater. Stevenson was still wearing the red on Tuesday. I would have to assume maybe Stevenson is in a regular jersey today, but doesn't play until Saturday. That's my assumption for Stevenson. Or maybe they even wait until Sunday because they don't want to roll him out in a back-to-back -back scenario. Was this uh, the first game? Was that the game that Paul Cotter had that spectacular goal? I think that I think was, that was the Montreal Flyers. Game. I think that was the Flyers. Oh, it was a Flyer game. Okay. I could be wrong. No, you're right. He might and... have tried to do it again in this game. I mean, Cotter tried. He's tried to do it like every game since, and we always uh, – joke about that whenever we get him in the media scrubs afterwards he's looking for new instagram post i suppose but uh the no, news about no Cotter, news yesterday nothing yesterday Go yeah, ahead. yeah we're, we're in the same the news is no news way. no news uh so as we said yesterday player safety i thought would sleep in until about one o'clock new york time and as it turned out there was nothing they didn't it's report inconclusive. we don't know if they slept in because there's no announcement it's just ridiculous. Like, it's a push. should there be a suspension? Yes. Yes, there should be uh, for the hit on Kuznetsov to his head. I uh, would be or should curious. there at least be a hearing? I would be curious. So the NHL is good at offering transparency when what? the NHL is good at offering transparency when, when a player okay. is suspended. Okay. They do the video. Right. They talk about it. And then they, they'll, you know. It's they'll show you six different angles of the hit in question and why they gave the suspension that they did where there's no transparency, which is where you, I think you were about to get on me is why, why is, and again, we still don't know. I mean, there could be an announcement today. Maybe the player safety didn't want to make an announcement yesterday because the team was traveling. I don't know, but it would be interesting to see why Cotter would not be getting a suspension. I'm glad he's not. They can definitely use his presence tonight, especially if Nick was back in the lineup. Um, Ron Beard, no disrespect, but obviously uh, having Nick Waugh and Cotter is better for the Golden Knights than Ron Beard down there on the fourth line. So why is Cotter not getting suspended? I mean, if you compare to some of the hits, and guys, you can do the same thing that I, that I did yesterday. Just go on the NHL Department of Player Safety Twitter handle, and they will show you all of the recent suspensions. If there is one difference about the Paul Cotter hit versus all of the other suspensions that have been handed out this season, Paul Cotter did not take a running head start. It wasn't like he came across the ice to make a hit. Think about the Brett Howden suspension. Brett Howden absolutely blindsides Tenev and gets him in the head, but it wasn't just like, I mean, Cotter had, what, two steps and then 
he and he's looking away too. That's the other thing. I didn't catch this uh, until I watched it yesterday afternoon. But Cotter's looking away as the contact's being made too. I don't care what the intent is. Like that's that's irrelevant in this case. But if he's not even looking at the player and it happens, the NHL might have said, "Listen, he missed thirty five minutes of the game. He missed over half the game." Mm-hmm. That's that's his that's his penalty for it. And if that's agree. the case, fine. I don't I don't agree. Gary Bettman was at the White House with his team. End of story. I'm not drinking the jungle you're, juice. You're going cup. there. I'm not going there. I mean, I I'm I'm supportive of player safety, whichever way they go, because of the transparency they offer on other types of hits. And right. maybe this unlike hit does the rest of the NHL. Bad. Unlike the rest of the NHL, they do offer transparency. And that's fair. That's fair. Uh this uh Montreal team. Now, 10 points behind the Bruins in the Atlantic Division. Yesterday, they had some sort of shooting drills. They're not scoring a lot of goals, and they expected a lot out of Juraz Slavkovsky. Slavkovsky. We'll get that out. Yeah, thank you. Uh, One goal. Not an easy one. I know, especially when you're, like, sleep-deprived. One goal in 16 games. Josh Anderson, Raphael Harvey, Pinard, no goals on the season. And so they expected more firepower out of uh, them. Uh, This is a team as well, Chris, that has three goaltenders. Um, Sam Montebo, we faced uh, VGK. We saw him face. He had a good game. He had a good game game that game. Very good game that night. Yeah. He didn't fan on any shots or anything like that. Uh, (laughs) Jake Allen and Caden Permo. So uh, they're a young team, young defensive team, I should say. And one of the biggest issues that they have right now is that this team is not finishing offensively. So we can basically say it's a team of Amadios, maybe. Ooh, ouch. That was just <laughs> not nice. That's not nice. No, that so, wasn't that wasn't a dig on him. That guy, I think, has just been it wasn't. It wasn't. No, he's been the heart and soul of this team, like of late. He's really played his butt off. But he oh, just can't no, seem to find a net. Didn't listen. Amadio is working he just can't his, uh, his donkey off right now because we shouldn't say that other word. He is working his butt off out there, and the goals will come. I think the goals will yes. come for Amadio. Yes. He's earning I like his Amadio. chances. He's going to be up on the second line tonight, I would assume, um, assuming Stevenson does not dress for tonight's game, and he'll get some chances. He'll find his ways behind uh, the Canadians' defense. You said Josh Anderson had no goals. I had to go and look at that because – Josh That's Anderson correct, was. Right? Is, am I right? Yeah, no, you're 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 right. But okay, he was extremely noticeable in the game. I felt against the Golden Knights, he was fast. He was making plays, and mm. when you said no goals, I had to go and look at that, and I was that surprised me. Only two assists, and I mean Caulfield, Suzuki, Monahan, okay, and then just Alex Newhook is at least revitalizing his career. He couldn't get anything going in Colorado. He's got seven seven points and. I mean, RHP, he's a rookie. Raphael Harvey Pinard. Uh, Pinard. Um, Zheka, the guy they call Wi Fi, his last name's spelled X H E K A J. Watch for him to uh, impose his will on the game. Uh, he's one that loves to throw hands and mix it up. And he uh, got a takedown when he fought Ryan Reeves earlier in the year. So uh, I don't know. Do you think uh, Colasar maybe uh, wants to avoid a fisticuffs tonight? No, no fights for Colasar. He's still got a lump on his head. He, he, took a, he, he took a he he took a hit he he took a hit he took a hit but listen yeah. I'll tell you right now if there is a reason for there to be a fight and Colasar's out there he's gonna do it he will not Ooh, back down strong. from anyone Ooh, he's strong <laughs> he will fine but the Colasar will not back down from anyone on the ice in any circumstance so give All him right. credit there and maybe he'll get don't a goal tonight him, maybe we'll get a goal tonight don't give him more points because he landed a jab folks I mean he. <laughs> Got he got his butt kicked, but he landed a punch. He got his butt kicked. That's that's Tomorrow how a fight goes. Short little jab. He wasn't good, going nowhere. For him it's to be effective, start. he's got to go to the body. Those body punches. Coming up next, <laughs> uh, are there going to be new overtime rules in the National Hockey League? We'll get to that. Pretty interesting topic when we return right here on Locked On Golden Knights. Game time is the only ticketing app that gives you competitive absolutely complete peace of mind with your purchase uh, game time has deals on tickets right up until the start of an event and even an hour after that event starts it's the place to find last minute seats find exclusive flash deals and sponsor deals on tickets for football basketball baseball concerts for comedy 
which you always get here. You don't really need to pay for our comedy, but go to, of course, Game Time and check that out. Or theater, much, much more. With zone deals, you just pick the section. Game Time will pick the seats. It's an average of 18% savings. And the Game Time guarantee, that means that you will always get the best price if you find tickets in the same section and row for less, then Game Time will credit you 110% of the difference. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app. You can create an account and use the promo code LOCKDOWNNHL for $20 off of your first purchase. Terms apply again. Create the account and make sure that you use the, you use the redeem code, which you see on the screen here, LOCKDOWNNHL for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Welcome back. Locked on Golden Knights. Tony Cardasco, Chris Golick from Las Vegas. Thank you so much for making us your first listen each and every day. We appreciate that. Go to the YouTube channel. Subscribe there. Make sure that you check out our exclusives. Uh, WTF1. Of course, uh, we'll have our show for tomorrow. WTF, leave your comments, some terrific comments last few weeks. It's been so much fun uh, from all of you out there, especially the everydayers. Saturday mornings, skip the cartoons, uh, <laughs> bring your Wheaties to the screen and watch the Chris and Chris show. That was good. Fun. We got to talk about it really fast before you dig into the overtime rules. Mm -hmm. Dennis Sanko, Silver Knights. Oh, had. That's between, your guy. That's your that's, boy. I've been talking this guy. I know you've been talking for a about. while. He gets the remember William back Carlson the day, goal. What's remember up? when I used to? Yeah, remember when I used to chat up William Carlson back in the day? No, I don't remember when we used to chat up William Carlson. Is he still wearing the red jersey? Because there's no contact around him ever. He, he so never gets. Dennis hit. Sanko, Tony Cordasco, uh, skates in yesterday <laughs> and gets an just an amazing between the legs goal. Regulation, not even like a shootout scenario or anything like that. Um, the uh, a la William Carlson, season one on uh, the San Jose Sharks. So, uh, Dennis Hank goes up to seven goals, eight assists, 15 points, 13 games. Um, for reference, with Charlotte last year, 56 games, 36 hmm. points. So, Dennis Sanko is on an absolute tear right now. Major props, Kelly McCrimmon for finding a way to bring in a potential reinforcement, someone who can maybe help the Golden Knights later this year. Hopefully not, because that means there's injuries. But no, down the but road, Dennis Sanko, he's good money in the bank. I would like Great to see him. In the bank. Uh, so, Brendan Brisson, have we heard anything from him? I'm just curious. He got, I haven't... he got a goal last night, I can tell you that much. Okay. I don't, just don't, I thought that he would have Dennis Sanko type numbers this season yeah i mean listen they're both young players right brisson's certainly a little bit younger and mm -hmm. developing and i mean you know it, it takes time like it takes time um that's not the stats i don't got up here in front of me i'm looking for them all right here we go all right so the, 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 i gotta scroll down Ooh, i'm scrolling down way too far uh ren paul's got 12 right now brisson five and six uh, he's got 11 points, 13 games. Point per game pace. He's fine. He's pretty good. He's doing That's great. Okay. He's doing good. Yeah. Um, so do you think that Denisenko could be moving up, though, the charts here and be like that next man up? He could be. He could be this year's version of Pavel Dorofiev. Uh, That's where I thought Brendan Brisson might fit in, but it could be Denisenko. To be fair, um, Denisenko has struggled at in the NHL level, though. Um, he's played a total of 26 games, seven assists, all with the Florida Panthers. So hasn't been, haven't been able to find a way to score at the NHL level, but you know what? He's figuring it out right now. He's figuring it out right now. Golden Knights don't got to rush him, and maybe it'll be Dennis Sanko season uh, later in the year. So uh, there was a tweet the other day from, uh, what was this, the GM's meetings, um, and it was from Greg Wyshynski. Uh, sounds like changes could be coming for the NHL three on three overtime. I think they listened to the show because we said that there definitely needed to be changes. Well, okay. Uh, we know that, of course, management for VGK, they listen to this show. 
and they've adapted and made some changes that we suggested. Uh, he said lots of discussion about reducing puck possession, potentially by trying to make half court rules on circling back in your own zone. So what all does this mean? Like I just see when they say circle back, you know, and all that, th you know what? Do you put in an emergency goalie and then faces both teams and you play like half court, half ice? I didn't get it. I mean, I, I don't really understand. Uh, what all the particulars might be there, but is it a good rule, bad rule? Like we thought that there needs to be some changes there. Three out three in OT. The concern is all the reloading, right? Puck possession is obviously very important when you're in a three on three scenario. What the NHL, in my opinion, wants is that up and back chaotic, like last 90 seconds of overtime. They want that to be the entire overtime. And what's happening is a team wins the faceoff. They send out their best faceoff player. They win the faceoff. That player sprints to the bench. The defenseman brings the puck all the way behind, and then they start, you know, they carry the puck across the blue line, skate around, nothing's there. They leave the blue line, go across the red line, do it again, nothing there, go back and forward, and so on and so forth. To be fair, the Golden Knights don't do a lot of this. The Golden Knights, I feel, they're a little less patient than other teams. It's not a bad thing. They're just in attack mode where – as a puck possession team like the Canadians, when you got someone like Caulfield and Suzuki out there in overtime, you'll see it tonight. They'll take it back a million times trying to get that perfect drive to the net. So what's being discussed right now is, like you said, schoolyard, half court, you know, no take backs, that type of thing right now. They don't want the puck crossing the red line is what it seems like. I okay. say, make, why make it the red line? Make it the blue line, first of all. Well, Don't let I, them take the puck out of the blue line. The, I said erase the blue line. Just take it out. Or take it out for long passes. I'm okay with that, too. Um, but the concern is, okay, let's say there is a backcourt violation. I and mean, that's what that's gonna, they're going to call it, back ice violation. Team A brings the puck over the red line. So are you going to stop play and do a face-off now? That seems weird, right? Are you going to – is that team immediately going to have to chip the puck into the corner and play continues and the clock doesn't stop. That seems mm. weird. Like now they're going to be dumping the puck hard. It's going to be like soccer in a throw in guys where, you know, team A knocks the ball out of bounds. Team A picks the ball up out of bounds and they play dumb. Like, oh, it's not my throwing. And then instead of hand the ball to team B, they drop it down, throw it away from them. And it's just annoying watching that stuff. So the NHL is in a little weird of a conundrum, if that's a good word, good way to say it, or snafu, something we learned in Wordle a few months ago. Um, I don't know. I, I don't like anything that's going to add in a weird stoppage of play, but I like things like taking out the blue line, like no offsides. Let, let players cherry pick. Like if someone wants to cherry pick and go for that deep home run pass, so be it. Um, I saw someone else say, put 10 minutes on the clock. If no one wins in overtime, the game ends and no one gets points. It's interesting. Good old fashioned um, way, sort of. Right. Yeah, but I mean, listen, Americans want a result, right? That's how American sports are. Although the the MLS and and the soccer leagues haven't figured that out yet, unfortunately. I don't, I don't, you can so, tie in the MLS still, I think, right? I think you can. I, I believe so. It, yeah. So I have to ask, though, since they're going to try to do NBA like rules, are they going to put up the two point arc now? They should. Why not? I mean, well, you get two points outside of the uh, the circles. They don't they do that in the three on three league that's going on like over the summer? Oh, like, I missed they have, that. I think Seriously? they have a line. So what they do in the three on three league? There's actually some cool stuff in there. Yeah, I've so, not watched one of their games. Not I one. haven't either. I know Brandon Perry's doing well down there. Besides that, I don't know much about the it. Perry but go round. What I do know is okay. there's no penalties. Any okay. penalty is a shootout. Is is um any penalty is a um uh the the the, 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 the what, what's the word when there's a, a shootout? Not the shootouts. Penalty shot. There we go. Penalty oh, shot. Penalty up shot. Any penalty results in a penalty shot. If the puck hits the netting, it's not out of play. It is still oh, in seriously? play. Seriously, that's what I love. That's what I said that they should do in the NHL. Going. I didn't know that. You're not going to see that happen, but I love. That. I wouldn't be against. It's like them. arena football. That's what they used to do. Or right, they arena. Still do, they right? still do. They still do. They still do. You kick the ball, goes off the net. It's still live ball. I love. That's that. how they do the kickoffs. I think. I think they angle it somewhere, and I don't know. Um, but. I'm okay with like not that. allowing teams to reload, but what I don't know is how you keep the pace of play going. I like something like take out the blue line. 
take out the blue lines, open up the game, let the players be anywhere be on the open. ice. And I think that will solve a lot of the issues right there. Okay. Well, but at least it's a step in the right direction. If you can only go back to the red line, tag up, and then go ahead, you can't go back and reload. And it also wastes a lot of time as well. And you'll maintain the puck possession because they play keep away of sorts and then they finally enter the zone. The, the way I see this, just putting a ball on it really quick, is there's passive conversations right now. The GMs are all together, I believe, in Toronto. There's going to be a meeting, I believe, in the springtime where dad is going to be presented that shows how often people are having the puck and shots being generated in overtime and stuff like mm -hmm. that. Once they have the data, I think that's when they're going to say, okay, the data says this is the problem. What can the solution be? So it's a step in the right direction. I hate the shootout. I hate the shootout. And right. I, I love think overtime. The league, I think I the, the league's getting overtime. tired of it too. Yeah, I think the league's getting tired of that as well. So maybe there's a better way. Uh, coming up next, uh, we will have our predictions and our locks of the night. Don't go away. Stay with us right here on Lockdown Golden Knights. You can score this NFL season with FanDuel. It's America's number one sports. Am I reading the right one? Yeah, for once. Okay. Uh, this season, make sure that you score with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. And right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150 bucks if your team wins. And if you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to do it then right now, just get into the action, folks. This app is so easy to use. There's a wide range of betting options, including point spreads, player props, totals, and much, much more. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and start this NFL season now. You can begin now at the midway point. FanDuel, the official partner of the National Football League. Welcome back, Tony Cardasco, Chris Golick from Las Vegas. We appreciate you making us your first listen each and every day. And, of course, you could find us on the YouTube channel. That's where you could find Chris and Mini Chris. It's like the mini slump for VGK. We've got Mini Chris in the house today. Um, someone on my Twitter feed last night, I, it's pretty good. Instead of fiasco, right, they spelled out fiasco, F-1-A-S-C-O. They put the one in there. I was, I was going to say Tony Diasco, but whatever. <laughs> no, it's Dasco's <laughs> Fiascos. That used to be my fantasy football team. All right. It's that time. It's it was time all Jets. It was all Jets, too. That's why you sucked in your fantasy. I know. We, I was so bad. We won one year, and then I quit because it just you have took too much effort. I wanted to be really good. I wanted to be the best on the planet. Predictions and locks of the night. All right. Little Chris is in the house. Go ahead. Have at it. All right, Chris. You want to start us off, buddy? What's the shirt, first of all? Is that a shark? It. It's a shark. Leave him alone. It's a shark. He's, someone oh. needs to show love for the sharks. Go ahead, Chris. Three, three, two, four, Vegas. Two. You said four, two. Remember? You said four, two. Oh, I got it. Yeah, four, two. <laughs> Get back in the frame. Four, two, I hope Vegas. he stays in the frame four, during his show on Saturday. He does. Yeah. Okay, all right, Chris. Go ahead. Say it again. Go ahead. Four, two, Vegas. What two players? Mm, Barb Jeff and Stevenson. Barbs oh. and Stevenson. Very, if Stevenson doesn't confident. play, Chris, which he's probably not, who's your backup? Eichel. Eichel. And then Mike drop and just leaves. And Mike drop and just leave. Yeah, but you got you got you got to promote better, dude. We got a show on Saturday, man. You got to like you know. Never mind. Okay, goodbye. We're gonna send him on the promotional tour. He'll be out there. Oh, it'll be great. It'll be, it'll be nice and short. And so is he gonna try to invade F one with you? Yeah. Uh he wants to, to be honest with you, but it's way right. too late. I'd be I don't know. I'm tempted to like go downtown to Fremont Street and like grab one of those like scooter rental things, you know, and just like go down and just cruise around like the east side of the strip and see what I can do. I don't know. Okay, that's so my, here was that's my here was the hack. plan. Here was one of the hacks last night. So I talked to a poor woman from on the monorail ride back because there were all sorts of uh, service industry folks on there. Uh, this one woman from Batista's hole in the wall, oh, wow, which they okay. took away all of their parking. It's centrally located and formula one put grandstands, I guess in front of it. And they also covered up all their parking. There's like three parking places there. Their employees. Here's a hack. Cause we're all about the people here in Las Vegas. So they park, employees are parking 
uh, for the most part, a lot of them at the Gold Coast Hotel Casino. And they've got those little scooters and they're going, getting around and navigating with the scooters from the Gold Coast to over there on uh, Flamingo Road for Batistas. So, but just shout out to all, while we're at it, seriously, shout out to all those folks that are putting up with this, all these inconveniences here. Because so, it is, it's kind of rough out there. And last night was the quiet night that it, they had expected 30,000 people there, uh, Chris, at the opening night. And it wound up, I'd say about, my guess would be 18, 15, 18,000 out there. A lot of people that were in the regular grandstands, uh, they didn't, they left or they didn't show up because of the rain. So, Shocker. but just shout out to all those industry folks. And I just like hearing how they're getting around and figuring out ways uh, to find their business. Uh, predictions. Oh, that's right. I am on a, I'm on a heater. I'm, I've won the last four. Okay. Um, I'm not going to surpass Allie anytime soon because she's just the greatest. But I'm going to go with Marcia So and Howden. And I'm going to say that this angry, frustrated Montreal team breaks out of here and wins this four to two. I'm going to go Montreal four, VG. Uh, are they VGK or when they lose, are they still VGS? I'm so, I'm going to say VGS. It's not an ESPN game. So the VGK, don't worry. Okay. That guy, that was such a joke a couple seasons ago. <laughs> um, so Allie has uh, Allie has called her picks in. Uh, she's going Stone and March. So shocker. And she says, like, this isn't me just writing down, like, because she said this, like, for a couple seats. This is three, Allie it's rolls with two, Stone final. and March. So three, two Golden Knights. That's what it Allie is. says. And listen, she knows more than we do because she's kicking all of our butts right now in the standings. Um, I'm going to go with. Amadio, because I've been dogging him a little bit for not being able. I'm to not finish, dogging so. him. I just think he's close. I would that wasn't a dog earlier. I no, I just but think I, he's I've been that dogging close. him a little bit. I've been dogging him. I just like his bits. play. He's around the net. Yes, the puck. He's going to get rewarded. He, he's going to get They'll rewarded. Have eyes. They'll the give puck's going to get eyes. eyes. We're going to get some puck luck. There we go. Uh, Kolasar, just because why not? Kolasar, Am if Ammo and Kolasar score tonight, that's a that's a walk off victory for the Golden Knights. Um, I think it's another close game, but we're going to go three two Vegas tonight. Okay. And remember in that first meeting, I just remembered that Montreal hit a lot of posts. Remember that? They did. They had there a was ton a of few. posts. It must there have was. been four or five posts in that game. And yeah. we, I think we said that Flurry would have been making out with the post after four or five. The, this was a game, if I recall, where the locker room afterwards, it was kind of, you know, it wasn't a winning locker room. What I mean when I say that is like, it wasn't a team that just won an NHL game. It was, uh, things aren't going, you know, they could be going better. We're just a little bit off. I don't remember those, that was the specific one, but my point is the vibe of the locker room did not match a team that just won a game. So I think the Golden Knights, I mean, they had a good enough effort against the Caps to at least get out of there with a point. Unfortunately, it didn't happen. So I think you're going to see a solid effort tonight, hopefully better execution and a dang power play goal. We appreciate everyone tuning in, especially our everydayers. Don't forget tomorrow, WTF lineup. Of course, all of your comments. WTF one. It's gonna be the whole show. It should be the entire show. It really should be. It should be. Should I start off with why was Batman there hanging out with the team uh, there at the White House, and then of course Saturday's the Chris Times Chris Show. You don't want to miss that. That is a YouTube exclusive. For my man, Chris Golick, I'm Tony Cardasco. I need a nap. We appreciate everyone tuning in. We'll see you tomorrow right here on Lockdown Golden Knights.